This video will provide a step-by-step -step guide on how to download and install Weblink Desktop, create a Weblink account, and how to flash and update the firmware for your DSR1. To begin, go to www.idatalinkmaestro.com and click the Flash Your Module button in the upper right hand corner. A window will appear and display Opening Weblink Desktop to Flash Your Module. Since Weblink Desktop has not been installed, click the link to get it now. A new page will display, and on the right hand side, you will see options for downloading Weblink Desktop for your operating system. Click the Download button located next to the Window OS. Once the download is complete, open the executable file from the lower left-hand corner of your browser, or from the Downloads folder on your computer. A window will now appear requesting the app make changes to your device. Click Yes. A second window will appear asking you to agree to our End User Agreement. Next you will see the Weblink driver installation. Leave everything selected and click Next. You will now be prompted to select the location where you want the Weblink program installed. If you wish to change the location, do it now, otherwise click Next. You will see a progress bar followed by a window that says Welcome to the Device Driver Installation Wizard. Click Next. Once the installation is complete, click Finish. Locate the Weblink application on your desktop. If you did not choose to create a desktop icon, then locate it from the search bar by typing in Weblink. Once opened, you will see an option for login credentials. You must create a Weblink account before you can flash your device. If you do not have a Weblink account, click the link to sign up now. The Demo Mode button at the bottom of the page will not allow you to flash your device. This is only a demonstration of how Weblink Desktop works. You can complete a test run of the flashing process, but it will not flash a connected module. After selecting the Sign Up link, a new window will appear. Enter your information into all of the available fields. When finished, click Sign Up. An email will now be sent to the address that you have entered. You must verify your account before you can log in. Using your computer or a mobile device, open your email and locate the message from Weblink titled Activate Your Account. If you do not see the email from Weblink, be sure to check your spam folder as it may have been sent there. Open the message and you will see a box that says Confirm My Email. Click this to complete your Weblink account activation. A new window will open and you will see a message that says your account is now active. Return to the Weblink desktop application and enter your credentials to log in. Once you are logged into your Weblink account, connect the DSR1 to your computer using the provided USB cable. Next, select the Flash Maestro button on the home screen. After the device has been detected, you will see what module is connected and the serial number. Scroll to the bottom of the page where it says Embedded Device. This is the firmware for the built-in Bluetooth used for tuning the DSP. To ensure the BLE is up to date, click Reflash Embedded Device. Once the update is complete, click the Redetect button in the lower right hand corner. Now that the Bluetooth has been updated, you can begin the flashing process. Select Flash by Vehicle. Start by entering the year, make, and model of the vehicle. Next, identify the factory radio that is in the vehicle. In some cases, there will be more than one option. Make sure your selection matches the radio exactly. Next, select the recommended firmware version that is displayed. Now choose the T-harness that you are using for the installation. Next, there will be optional accessories to choose from. If you are not using any additional accessories, click Continue. In this step, you can reassign the factory tone controls and system controls to operate certain functions of the DSR-1. The tone controls like bass, mid, and treble will no longer function as they did from the factory. For example, when the bass is increased on the radio, the command is performed at the factory amplifier. Because the factory amplifier is no longer in the car, these functions will no longer work. 
However, the DSR1 can reassign them to a new function such as subwoofer volume control. Once you have configured the OEM controls, click continue. Now you will need to specify if you are using a center channel speaker and where you would like your prompts to play through. The prompts will include things like navigation turn by turn, Bluetooth calls, chimes, and alerts. Once complete, click continue. The programming is now complete and you are ready to flash the DSR1. Before you proceed with the flash, you can review and edit any of the steps from this screen. If you are satisfied with the programming, click flash. Once flashing is complete, make sure to download and save the installation guide. You will need the installation guide after the DSR1 firmware is updated. Also download the wallet card which provides a visual guide to your new radio controls. Now that flashing is complete, you will need to update the DSR1 firmware. Click the link at the bottom of the flash screen. If you have already closed Weblink Desktop, you can access the link here. Although the DSR1 can be flashed using a PC or Mac computer, the DSR1 firmware update can only be performed on a Windows-based PC. Once you click the link, a page will open titled 2017 DSR1 Signal Processor Software and Owner's Manual. Scroll down to the middle of the page and locate the DSR1 updater software. Then download the most current version. Save the .exe file somewhere that can be easily located, like the desktop. Then scroll further down and locate the current DSR1 software version. Again, save this somewhere it can be easily located, like the desktop. Now close the page and minimize Weblink Desktop. Locate the .exe file you downloaded earlier called dsr one update setupexe and open it. This will begin the installation of the program. Once the installation is complete, the application will open. If the DSR1 is still connected to the computer, the program should auto-detect it. Locate the DSR1 software you downloaded earlier. This file will be compressed and you will need to extract it. Right-click on it to open it using Windows Explorer. Drag the uncompressed DSR1 version to the desktop, then close the window. You can now delete the compressed file if you wish. Return to the DSR1 updater and click the Open File button. Locate the uncompressed DSR1 software on the desktop and open it. Then click Upload to Device. You will now see a progress bar as the software is being updated. The firmware update is now complete. You can disconnect the DSR1 and install it into the vehicle. If you forgot to download the installation guide before closing Weblink Updater, you can download it from our website. Go to www.idatalinkmaestro.com and click the Menu button in the upper right-hand corner. Choose Guides from the menu list. Then choose Amplifier Replacement and enter the year, make, and model of the vehicle. From the Amplifier or DSP dropdown, choose Rockford Fosgate and then choose DSR1 from the model list. You will now see the installation guide available for download. The DSR1 has built-in DSB that is tuned via a mobile device using the Perfect Tune application available for Apple and Android devices. Although you can use a smartphone, it is recommended to use a tablet. Once the Perfect Tune app is installed, you will need to pair the mobile device to the DSR1 via Bluetooth. Make sure the DSR1 is powered on and near the mobile device. Open the Perfect Tune application and press the red Bluetooth icon at the bottom of the home screen. It will automatically begin looking for the DSR1. Once it has located it, you will see it from the list. Click on it and it will pair the device. The status should read connected. Now return to the home screen and the red Bluetooth icon should now be blue signifying that it is connected to Bluetooth. You can now go through the setup wizard to configure the system and then tune the DSP.